Hi everyone, Wardra and I are actually at Epcot here in Orlando and uh, we're risking getting arrested actually by taking off our face masks but we thought we would take the opportunity to talk to all of you about what the next step might be after you've marked been acted your loved one or they have been uh, the recipient of a guardianship. So a lot of our families are coming to us and saying, okay, what next? So this is kind of Audra's wheelhouse and I saw it while we were here before I actually get thrown out of Epcot for not wearing the face mask. Um, we would talk about that. So, you know, we're getting a lot of families that are, are coming to us. We do the march out, we do the guardianship and typically they work with us at least three to six months. But maybe we can enlighten them. Like, what's the next step? Like, what's the most important thing? Once, once, once their loved one seems to be stabilized, what's the next thing they really should be thinking about? Well, one thing that they can be thinking about is protecting their assets in the future and leaving a, some type of a legacy. So you have to consider that this person has had some issues. They've ha either had some substance abuse or mental health disorder. And if you pass away, then all your assets might be inherited by them if you don't provide otherwise and so you might want to set up a trust that will provide for them to have access to funds when when you're deceased but restrict their access to it so they're not they don't wind up with a, a huge chunk of change that could contribute to them going down the wrong path again so so basically the goal is that obviously once once mom and dad potentially shuffle off the planet is to make sure that their adult child not only maintains sobriety, but has potentially the financial tools that are available to do so, and also incentivizes them not to waste the assets to support the habit. Is that right? Exactly. All right. So, well put. so, so, how does that happen? Like, what's what's the mechanism for doing that? So, we can set up some type of restrictive language in your trust that you already have, saying that a trustee that won't make a distribution unless the individual stays in treatment, stays on medication, doesn't start using substances again or we can actually set up a, a special needs trust for their benefit and restrict their access to the, to the money as well as potentially protect the assets so that if they need to get governmental benefits, they'd also qualify. Okay, so normally how long does that take to settle that up? Uh, not, not that long. It's a so matter of, of having a conversation, sitting down, creating the, the terms of the trust, the wishes of the person who's creating the trust and, and signing the documents. Okay, so it probably is something that can be done within a couple of weeks. Sure. All right, so look, that's what we wanted to share with you as we actually have managed to take a weekend off. And uh, so we did Epcot today, we walked around with face masks all day long and it was really hot, not fun. And tomorrow we're doing Animal Kingdom, which I've never done before. <laughs> so anyway, with that said, look, if you're a, um, if your parents, uh, if you're a parent that has uh, marchman acted or guardian, you know, filed the guardianship for your loved one and you want to make sure they're protected after you pass, then give us a call call and speak to Audra. The main number of the office is 561-419-6095. You can email Audra, Audra, A-U-D-R-A, at drugandalcoholattorneys.com. You can also email me, mark at drugandalcoholattorneys.com. And if you can't find us in either of those emails or phone numbers, just go to the web website, drugandalcoholattorneys.com. Anyway, thanks for listening. And also thanks for being supportive of this Thank newsletter, which we which we enjoy doing. Definitely yeah. like a great, good timing, right? Good timing. Yeah. Thank you very much everyone for listening.